we got to try that again. People are still coming in. Good morning, church. Happy Easter, but better than that, happy Resurrection Sunday. I mean, we're going we're gonna to be celebrating today uh, because we have something to celebrate. And if you're, if you're wondering, you know, Terry's probably wondering, no, I did not sleep here overnight. I, I, I still do sleep at home. <laughs> But we're going we're to start this off. I'm going to read a script, one of the scripture passages of, of the empty tomb. And then I've got a short video that we're going to, to watch. And then we're going to dive in, uh, dive in head first into the blessing of God. So you, you guys, you got your flags ready. We're good to go. Now on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb. And while it was still dark and saw the stone had been taken away from the tomb, Then she ran and came to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and said to them, They have taken away the Lord out of the tomb and we do not know where they have laid him. Peter therefore went out and the other disciple and were going to the tomb. So they both ran together and the other disciple outran Peter and came to the tomb first. And he, stooping down and looking in, saw the linen clothes lying there. Yet he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb, and he saw the linen clothes lying there, and the handkerchief that had been around his head not lying with the linen clothes, but folded together in a place by itself. I think we could have a sermon series on that ending right there. And I, who folded that linen cloth that was on Jesus' head? Did the angels fold it? I don't know what's going on there. But that, that is just, how that is put there is just so amazing. It says, Then the other disciple who came to the tomb first went in also, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not know the scripture that he must rise again from the dead. Then the disciples went away again to their homes. Watch the video.
He is risen. He is risen. We have hope. We have hope because our Savior is alive and He has offered life to you and to me. Welcome to the harbor if you're new to us this morning. Uh, We love praising the Lord because He is worthy of our praise. And so if you'll stand, we're going to enter into praise this morning because we have something to praise Him for every morning, but we have something we're celebrating this time of year specifically, that He is alive. And because He is alive, we can be alive as well. So we are going to worship him. If you want to grab flags in the, the back and move with some banners, uh, this, this sanctuary is open for you to worship. We, we worship in different ways, right? We, we raise our hands in worship. We, we can lay prostrate on the, on the ground in worship. We can kneel at the altar in worship. So I want to, to open that up to you. You don't have to stay in your pews. You could even move a chair if you had to move a chair because you need a little bit more space. But let's truly worship our risen Savior because He has risen.
its grip on me you have broken every chain there's salvation in your name Jesus Christ my living hope hallelujah praise the one who set me free its grip on me you have broken every chain there's salvation in your name Jesus Christ my living hope oh Jesus Christ my living hope oh God you are my
song of your, the, that God has placed on your heart in, in chorus together. Just, just sing what God's laying on your heart. Sing holy Jesus. Sing, sing praise to the Father. We praise your name, God. We love you, Lord. We can't hold back, Lord, the Spirit fire. May you burn in us today. We love you, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, praise your name. We love you, Lord. Oh, we love you, Lord. We want nothing. Oh God, we praise you today. Lord, at your name, the name that is above every name, God, we praise you. There's no name like your name, Jesus. There's no one else that could, that could take that mountain, Lord, as we sing about that mountain that we can't move in our life and that mountain that, that we can't move in our life is sin. And God, you conquered sin on that cross. You, you went there and you, you died and gave your life for us. And it seemed like all was lost, that, that everything was, was over, that you were, you were dead and you were in the grave. But on the third day, God, you rose from the dead and you are alive and well. And because of that resurrection life, we have resurrection life. God, we praise you today. We praise you for that victory that is ours through you. Lord, help nothing to hold us back from, from pursuing you to, to pursue your presence, God. Lord, we didn't gather today just, just to be together as people. We gathered to be with you. That you would speak to us. That you would speak to us in our worship. 
that you would speak to us in our prayer together, that you would speak to us through your word, God, the greatest revelation that you've given us in, in 66 books that speak to us and speak to everything that could ever happen in life, God. We praise you, God. Change us today. We need changing. We need help. We need you. Lord, we gather together today with all kinds of things that we bring with us. But we don't want to carry them anymore. Because we have victory in you. We love you, Jesus. Thank you for how sweet it is to be in your presence. Thank you that you've opened yourself up to, for us to be in your presence, Lord. When, when you were crucified and that, that veil was torn from the top to the bottom, not from the bottom to the top, from the top to the bottom, you tore that veil to the Holy of Holies, that only the priest went in one time a year and they, they could have an experience with you that, that was special. God, you've invited us into that special kind of conversation so we can enter the Holy of Holies and talk to the Savior of the world. We can talk to the, the Father of all creation, God. Why would we not want to be in that conversation? Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your deep, 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 deep love for us. As we sang in that song, you didn't want heaven without your creation. Thank you, God. We look forward to that day seeing you face to face on the other side of eternity. But today, God, we worship you here. Today we worship you in this life because we know we're going to worship you forever in that life. So we're just getting a little practice in, God. Worshiping you here today. We praise you and we thank you. And we ask this in your name, Jesus, and all God's people said, Amen. Amen. He's risen, church. I'm excited for what God has in store for us. I don't know if you came with expectations of what God was going to do, but I'll tell you what, God can blow your expectations. Amen? And I didn't plan this out. I put this suit coat on this morning because I wanted to wear this shirt. And I got a hanky in both pockets of this suit coat, so we're good to go for the service today. I don't have a lot of announcements um, that I'm going to share today. Um, one of the ones that I'm going to share is next Sunday night is worship night. So come and be a part of that. We're going to worship. Starts at 6 for a light meal, and then we're going to worship at 7, and uh, we're going to come into the presence of God. And uh, God loves it when his people come in his presence. Usually we have um, some prayer circles now. Uh, time and we're not we're not going to do the prayer circles at this time we're just going to pray all together and so what what I'm going to have you do though I, I know we're, we're unified in this room but span the aisles and and connect hands as we pray together so if you'll come together you don't worry you'll get back to your seat nobody's going to take it while you're gone just just span over and just hold hands with the person that's next to you and I'm going to pray there there's we, we celebrate life today, amen? amen. We're celebrating life, um, but in this, in this life, in this life here, we all know that we deal with death as well, in the physical sense. And uh, there, there has been a, a couple deaths that ha have touched people in this sanctuary, and there's probably some that aren't even shared with me. Uh, over the course of the last, last time, John's dad passed away a time ago, and uh, so we're going we're gonna to pray for them. Adam Trask just passed away. 
Uh, some of you know him, some of you don't. And uh, Tim, uh, Tim Lund Lindquist passed away. And uh, that is uh, Julia and Jack's uh, father. And uh, so we're going we're gonna to pray for the families right now. We're going we're gonna to pray. I'm going to pray for more than that. But God, our God is a God of comfort. Amen? Amen. He comforts us in, in our place of grief. And then we come to the empty tomb and we say, okay, God, you've got an empty tomb for me as well. And we, we have everlasting life. But let, let's pray together. Lord, we come before you. Lord, we, we celebrate life. We celebrate the life that you've given us everlasting. But God, in this physical sense, we still, we still deal with loss. Lord, we'll read that passage in your word today. Because you wept over Lazarus when he was in the tomb. You wept over Lazarus in the tomb and you knew that moments later you were going to say, come out. So God, we know it's okay to, to weep and to feel loss. And so God, for, for these families today, for the Trask family, for the Dixon family, for the Lindquist family, God, I pay for your grace and mercy for them. For the comfort that, that only you can bring, God. Many times we don't have words Words for those moments. And sometimes we don't need words. We just need to walk alongside people. And so God, today we walk alongside them and we, we, we call on you, the, the king of the universe, to intervene in those situations. And God, there's situations that are happening in this house that, that I am not even aware of. Lord, loss and, and, and family and all those kind of things that we deal with. And I, God, I thank you that you know the things on each and every one of our minds. As crazy as that sounds for us, God, you know what each of us is thinking at this moment. And so, Lord, we find peace in knowing that you are an all-knowing God. And you know what we need and you know how to bring it to us. And so, Lord, I pray that you would bring that today. And Lord, many times there's things I forget and that's why I'm so glad that you, you bring those things to each of our minds and you know what we're praying, even as I'm the only one praying out loud, God, that you know the prayers that are coming from our heart and soul to you as the, the creator of the universe. For the different healing that needs to take place in this place today. Physically, emotionally, uh, Lord, on every level. And that you would meet that need today, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your love. Thank you for these people and for bringing us together today. In your name we pray, Jesus. Amen. And you don't have to find your seat yet. We're going to take the offering now. So I'm going to pray for the offering. And I will take, I don't know who I had. Elijah hasn't helped me for a little bit. Josie, you want to help me? We got to maybe move a little way from the stage here because I got all kinds of stuff in the way. So we'll, yeah, we got some weights, huh? And I'll, and this being said, just so we don't have mass chaos as we have offering. Kids don't leave the sanctuary. You're staying in the, in the sanctuary with us. I got, some, I got some things in store for you, so don't, just hold tight. I won't, I'm not going to forget you, so, but don't, don't race out of the room, okay? I know you just sat down. We're going to stand back up. Uh, and then you'll move for the offering. I'm going to pray for, pray for the offering, and then you can move. Uh, and greet, greet some people around you. Greet some of the visitors that are here with us today. Um, we're glad that you're with us. Lord, we thank you for your blessing. Lord, your blessing financially for each and every one of us, for the clothes on our back, for the cars we drive, for the homes we live in. And uh, Lord, we are truly blessed. And so we thank you. And so, Lord, we bring our tithe and offering to you. What you have called us to do, and Lord, 
releasing it to you. Lord, every time I I think of that, I I think of you multiplying things in your ministry. And so, God, we pray that you would multiply these things in in the ministry, in your hands, God, miraculously. You would make it go farther than we could even ask or imagine, God. I thank you that you are supernatural. And a supernatural God can do supernatural things. So, God, we just, we trust you. We praise you and we thank you, God. I thank you for everything that's going to take place in this house as the kids are with us in the sanctuary. I just pray that you would speak to our hearts, God. I pray that your message that comes through me, God, that I am attentive to you, that I am attentive to your ear and what you, uh, what your, my ear is attentive to you and your voice, that you would speak to me, that it would, it would minister to any age. That this, this message from your word, it doesn't matter how old we are, that it would minister to the hearts of everyone in this room and we would be changed. We love you, Lord. We ask this in your precious name, Jesus. Amen. So you can move and bring your offering and greet three, four people. Greet some people you haven't greeted for a while. Well, you'll have some more time after to greet. I'm glad that you're uh, enjoying conversation. I just don't want to lose control here. Well, the scripture passage that I'm going to read, as I I read from John chapter 20 earlier about the empty tomb, there's a few verses where, well... I've got a few verses here, so we're going to be, be running through. But the, the passage that I'm keying in on is Matthew 11, verses 28 through 30. Just those three verses are, are really what we're going to key in on uh, as we celebrate the resurrection. He is risen. Yes, he is risen I'm going to prompt you once in a while, and I, I'm believing that you're going to stay awake. Stay with me. I know we got up for breakfast early. Now everybody's going to just kind of uh, fall asleep. <laughs> so starting chap- chapter 11, verse 20. Come to me, all you who are labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. That a witness to anybody this morning? I don't know about you needing some rest, but I don't know. I find peace in that. I don't know in your Bible, if you're reading this, well, you're reading it on the screen. We should have put that in red type, but then you couldn't have seen it on the screen as well. This is red letters in my Bible. This is Jesus speaking. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and lowly in heart. 
and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Amen to that. That, That's our Savior speaking there. That, That is the one that conquered death, that came out of the tomb and is alive. Amen? The d- death could not hold him. And he, he speaks to us in this passage, take my yoke, lay your burden on me. So I, I, I got a really tough title for it. It's going to take you a little while for you to get this for, for the sermon title today. Help! I know it's going to take you a while to remember that one. But it isn't that. The world needs help. Amen? Amen. And you and I need help because we're in the world. Amen? You and I need help. The world needs saving, so God sent his son. We celebrate that. We celebrate the fact that he said, John 3, 16, for God so loved what? He loved you and me, but he loved the world. He loved the whole world enough to send his son to bring about redemption and to to pay the penalty that nobody else could pay. To pay the ransom and to pay the the fine that was due because of our sin. Your sin and mine. Not not just your neighbor's sin, okay? But but your sin. That he, he paid that. So, so today is what we're celebrating. We're celebrating the fact that, that that payment has been made. That payment's been made for all of us in this room, and, and it's hard to even fathom, isn't it, that, that God died and, and paid that penalty for all mankind. From the beginning of time till whenever the end of time is, it was a payment enough for that. Now that is a serious payment. Just my payment was a serious payment because I need some redemption. And you can maybe say the same for your life. But we celebrate Christ's victory over the grave. 1 Corinthians 15. Here's where we're going to start bouncing around a little bit. Not in message, but in the word. I'm believing the message is going to be the same all the way through. And hang on with me, kids. We're we're going to get there. Uh, Your part's going to come soon enough. 1 Corinthians 15, 55 through 58. I'm actually going to start in 54, and I know I've done that to you before. I say something and I add more word. It's just the way I am. So when this corruptible has been put on incorruption, and this mortal has put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass and saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your sting? O Hades, where is your victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us victory through the Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Amen? The labor we have in this life is not in vain in the Lord because he has victory and death has no, no power over you anymore. That's hard for us to really grab a hold of because everything is physical for us, really. We think of the physical first, don't we? I, I think of the spiritual, but I was thinking about breakfast this morning. I like a good egg, egg bake and chocolate muffins and fruit and all those things. So today's world needs help, so he sent a Savior. Today's world and the world we live in needs help. So God sent his church. Huh? Amen? He sent a Savior, but now he's sending his church. And guess what? I don't know all of you in this room, but I'm believing that you're a part of the church, so God is using you to go to the world to proclaim that he is alive and well. I'm a little excited about what God has for us today. I think the cry of the world right now is exactly our sermon title today. 
They're crying, help! They're looking in all the wrong places, mind you, but they're crying, help. We can talk about that in all different areas of life, right? All different things, and we're going to talk about that in a little bit as the kids start helping me out. We need Jesus. We know his story. We know the price he paid. We, we know the victory and the victory that's ours through his resurrection. When we surrender our lives to him, he's asking us for something. He asks us to surrender to him. He doesn't, he doesn't make us surrender to him, right? He asks us to surrender to him. And so then we're, we're baptized into his name and, and we change our name. We're, not, we're now a Christ follower. We're, we're a part of the way that they called it in the New Testament. We are a Christian. We took his name on. My, my wife took my name on when we were married. When I'm married to Christ, I take his name on. You're the bride of Christ. And that's, that's a whole another. That's the thing about preaching. When you're preaching a message, it can bring you to another message. And, and, then, and then that message just became a sermon series for a Sunday morning. So in, in this Matthew passage that we studied, we talk, it talked about burdens. It talked about burdens that we bear and things that we carry. The burden of sin, that, that burden of sin that we bear. So I want to paint a little bit of a picture, picture for you this morning, and the kids are going to help me paint it. And if the kids are going, hey, I'm in for painting, <laughs> this just means we're going, going to put something together to help show. So if the kids want to come up at this point, and I've got something for you to leave with, so this, this is worth your time. And I'm going to have to move this, remove this jacket. Come, come over on this side here. I got all kinds of stuff here, don't I? You have a weight. I have a weight. Just a, we'll just leave it lay down for the second. <laughs> we, well, I will have you help me in just a moment. And I got a backpack, and I got sleeping bags, and I got a suitcase and another sleeping bag, and I've got another thing that I'll tell you about in just a second, because I don't want to distract you, because we're easily distracted, aren't we? <laughs> but I want, I want you to help me. So if, if one of you wants to take one of those weights, let's just put it in here. I got to, yep. The next one, let's set down yeah, a little bit softer. Oh, yeah, we got it. We got it. Oh, we got all kinds of weights, don't we? Okay, that, those we won't put in there. Let's just set those down a second. Those, I don't know if I want to carry that in my backpack. Well, we got some room in here. And I, I think we could fit this in there. I think you can always force something in there, can't you? <laughs> We're not going to get another one, but that's one. I don't know if you guys watched a movie. I know some of you did. I watched a movie where they were talking about Jesus' life, and Jesus was on the cross, and I thought it was really good. And he was on the cross, and as he was on the cross, and he would, took our sins, right? He took our sins upon him. Yes? You guys know, know that part from studying in, in children's church, from the teachers there. But pretty soon, all the, these black dots, did anybody see that movie where the black dots started coming on Jesus? Please help me out. Maybe some of the kids weren't there. That's a, what's in the Bible? Have you seen what's in the Bible? I watched what's in the Bible. You know what? I like some cartoons. You saw that one? And pretty soon, all of a sudden, you couldn't even see Jesus anymore because he was just so covered with all the black dots and pretty soon it was just the one big black blob because he took everybody's sin on him. And he redeemed us. Right? He saved us. And those are big words and those are words that your, your parents will get to unpack for you because that's what parents do. They unpack the word with us. Right? Right. I know you're with me. Sometimes the adults need cute cards, too. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put this on, because you know what our sin does at times? It weighs us down, doesn't it? I know this is a backpack, and we put weights in it, but our sin, you know, one of those weights could have been maybe not listening to our parents, because it says in the Word to obey our parents, right? So that could be a sin. Wow, you know what? This is kind of heavy. 
I'm glad we didn't put those other weights in there. Oh, there we go. Whoa. I, I think it was a lot nicer before I kept this on. Or before I put this on. Okay. Oh, there we go. Now it's not going to fall off. Woo. I don't really want to walk too much with that. That's heavy to carry. It'd be a lot nicer if somebody else carried that for me. Is, is there some buckles on the back? Is there some buckles hanging here? I think I, I feel a clip there. Can a couple of you, do you think you could hook one of the, yeah, don't hook the weight on there. Do you think you could hook, who, you want to help me, Josie? Can you hook one of those on one of those hooks or have somebody else help you? There's one hook here and one hook there. Can we get it? If you can't get it, just ask somebody next to you to help. Can you get it? Whoa! Now it's really getting heavy. Can we get another one on there? I mean, because I got, I got a lot of sin in my life. And it just keeps weighing me down and weighing me down. Whoa, it's getting heavier and heavier. Is, is there? Whoa, whoa, I hope I don't fall backwards. Oh, now we just uncovered something else. We'll, we'll deal with that in a second. Um, is there another suitcase or another bag? Is there anything else we can clip it to? I don't want to knock anybody over. Do you think those clips will hold two on one side? Yeah, it is heavy. I wish I could get rid of it. Whoa! I might need help. Yeah. Oh, can you can you hand one just carefully? Whoa, they are kind of heavy. Whoa, that is really heavy. Speaking of that, I got to turn this one tight. Sometimes he gets loose. And then they fall. Whoa. Whoa, I hit my, oh, I got a suitcase yet. How do I take that? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but I, I don't like, this doesn't feel very nice. I don't like walking around with all this stuff on me. Whoa. This is way too heavy. I've got way too much stuff I'm carrying with me. Wouldn't it be nice if we had someone that could take this load from us? Wouldn't that be nice? If there, if there was a way we could let go of the load? Do you know who took the load? Jesus took the load. When he says his yoke is easy and his burden is light, he means it. So the sin in our life, I can't sit on the step anymore. When he says, our, he says he takes our burdens, he does take our burdens. When we lie to our parents, I don't, I'm not going to call for a, a raising of hands, but we've probably done it once or twice. Maybe we, or more, where we, we've told a, told a lie which is a sin that, that weighs us down and we just kind of keep adding them and adding them and we can't ever get rid of them without Jesus. Okay, I'm going to pray with you before I lose total control. And then I've got a treat for you. I don't know, do you guys like ring pops? Yeah. Or, or don't, would you rather I had, had grapes or something like that? <laughs> you like these? Okay, well let's pray. You like blue? Uh, yeah, we got a color. I don't know if I have a, the same color for, that everybody wants, but we'll, we'll, try to, we'll try to please here. And you know, ask your mom and dad before you open the wrapper, okay? Can you close your eyes and pray with me? You know why we close our eyes? Not, not because God needs our eyes closed when we pray, because sometimes I pray when I'm driving. <laughs> I would crash. We pray so we just, we're just not distracted. We're just thinking about Jesus. Right? Lord, I thank you. I have the van. Yep. Let's just clo close our eyes for a second. Lord, I thank you that you've taken our burdens. If only we would let them release them to you, God. Thank you for conquering death. Death has no power over us, God, for each and every one of the Kids, I just pray for your Holy Spirit to be moving in their hearts and minds to draw them ever closer to you, to the, the realization of how much they need a Savior and that you are that Savior. 
that they don't need to carry their sins any longer, that they can, they can have that moment, that encounter with you right now, so it changes now for all eternity for them. We praise you, Lord. We ask this in your precious name. And we all said, amen. amen. Okay, let's hand these out. I don't know if the colors are on the wrapper, so they don't, they, yes. you have to guess. Ooh, that's good to guess. Oh, you're leaving too soon, Chris. <laughs> okay. Just grab one. Uh, I don't think there is yellow. Here, you want to hand them out? Do you have one? You have one? As soon as you have one, you can go back to your parents. Oh, and my lovely assistant. Thank you, lovely assistant. This might be the heaviest message that I've ever preached. Uh -huh. Isn't this you and you and I? We keep at we ha we have a sin in our life, and it doesn't go away until we release it to Him, and then then we add another one, maybe trying to hide one of the other ones. And then we just, we just keep walking around and we add another one and we add another one. And, and I can't carry both weights and take, and take my suitcase with me. But we, we take it with us. We take, take it with us to work. We take it with us to our homes. We take it with us to the gym, we take it with us to the grocery store, we take it with us to Quick Trip, that's my go-to gas station, no commercial, and we just take it with us, and it's, and it's, and it's okay, right, that's, we just take it with us, and then we get to Sunday morning, and guess what, we take it with us, and then we leave on Sunday morning, and we take it with us. And then we just start it all over again. We take it with us, and we take it with us. Oh, oh we come on Sunday morning, and, and we, we, we learn about the victory in Jesus, and, and we take it with us. We're, we're, we celebrate the victory we have, but it's, it's, hard, to, it's hard to really celebrate because, you know, if, if I, I put Adam... I add him to the mix, and yeah, yeah, he's my he's my savior, along with my baggage, you know, me, and uh, I'll, I'll, I I love that Jesus loves me. I love that he went to the cross, but I I'm really attached to my baggage. How do I get rid of this baggage? And so we just we just keep walking, and we keep we keep living life, and we keep coming on Sunday morning. And, we come on us Easter morning and we celebrate the graves empty and then we just keep keep on going and we keep on walking and keep on adding things to our to our life instead of laying them down. And this could just be another resurrection Sunday. I know we say happy Easter and that's all fine. We know what we're celebrating. But it's resurrection that we're celebrating. And we, we just keep on going. It could be another Easter and we don't lay them down. Keep them with us. I could go through the room. I could go through the, all of my thoughts and all the things that we add on uh, from, from our lust, from our greed, from, from the lying and, and cheating that we talk and the kids' honesty about. It's probably been a few more times than that that, that I've lied to, to my parents, um, it lied, to, lied to my boss. It's... it's my, my sexual identity, really, when I, I seek that out and I seek something other than what God has for me, maybe I'll find fulfillment in it, and we add it into the backpack, and we add our baggage, and we keep adding baggage to the point, and I, I wanted to bring more so I could really just stack it up, but this is really heavy enough for me for a Sunday morning. And so we get to the point, and we, we carry all that, and then Jesus says... 
as we read in Matthew 11. Come to me. That's the invitation to each and every one of us. Come to me. All you are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Now, there was, there was more to it there. He, he was speaking about the heaviness of, of sin that's in you and that, the sin that can't be dealt with. He's the only one that could deal with your sin. You cannot deal with your sin on your own. He is the only one that can deal with your sin. He was talking to the Pharisees as well here because they had laid a whole bunch of burdens on the people that you follow these laws and you follow these religion, this religious uh, set up and, and then you'll be fulfilled. And Jesus is like, that's not it anymore. Look to me because I'm the one that's going to take all this away for you. It says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me for I am gentle and lowly in heart and you will find rest for your souls. I like that this is, I'm just going to share just a couple stanzas, so to speak, on one page. And this is a, a children's book, essentially, but it's off of a, a larger book than that. And, it, and it's Pilgrim's Progress. Heard of Pilgrim's Progress? I'm assuming most of you have heard of Pilgrim's Progress. He, he walked a road and he carried a burden with him. And, and it's all about this Christian is his name. It's a good name. Um, as he walks along. And here, here's what he, he's walking along and dealing with his burden, and he's got this burden on his back. And it says, or sh-, it says Now I saw that in a dream that the road from then, because he was on a road, was fenced in on either side. The wall was named Salvation. Along the road did burdened Christian run. We're all on a road folks. Or should we say he did his best to run? I'm not going to run with this pack. And we can't run the Christian life with a burden on our back. At the foot of a hill, he passed, he passed an open tomb. Then up again and upon a little knoll, he found himself beneath a wayside cross. And I think this is just amazing writing and how he put this together. And as its shadow fell across him, so suddenly the burden slipping from his shoulders fell off his back and it tumbled down the hill and it tumbled into the mouth of the tomb as it was never to be seen from again. We need to learn what the cross means to us and not just not just something that we, we celebrate on Sunday. And, and don't get me wrong, this is something I need, to, I need to be living out. We need to, in the shadow of the cross, when we come on a Sunday morning, no matter what we're burdened with, lay it at the foot of the cross. We don't get rid of him, and, and may, maybe we're, we have a tendency to pick something back up again. Maybe it's from our past, and then we need to take that it's not something that we, we can deal with quickly. We can deal with it quickly, but if only we would deal with it quickly. Amen? So we, we keep taking things. We take all these sins in our life, and we want to carry them around and keep carrying them around. Instead of taking the flag of, of Chris, the Christian, taking the flag of Christ, the flag that we celebrate, the victory flag, and taking it so we can truly wave the victory flag. Don't lose the symbolization. I'm not setting him down. (laughs) So what does Jesus offer? He offers us a miracle, a miracle of salvation. Amen? He offers us a miracle of salvation. In John 11, just a few more passages, and then we're we're going to close it up. John 11, 39 through 34. And here's the, the passage I was talking about earlier where, where Razorus, <laughs> <Razzarus. laughs> this is not a new version. It truly is Lazarus. 
And if you can't laugh at yourself, just wait until you get home and then your kids laugh at you. <laughs> right? We have all kinds of those conversations at home after all of the, the stumbles. John 11, 39 through 34, 44. I'm not going to read the whole passage, but here is then Jesus again groaning in himself. This was after he had wept. So this, this isn't just a tear came to his eye. He's groaning in himself, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone lay against it. Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the sister of him who was dead, said to him, Lord, by this time there is a stench, for he had been dead four days. Like, there, there's no hope for him. It's going to stink in there. He is not just dead. He is dead, dead. There's no way that he is going to come to life. Do you feel like that sometimes when you're walking in life and carrying the burdens that you've carried for the last 40, 50 years and you don't know how to lay them down? You're like, I, I'm just so dead. I'm, beyond, I'm so beyond anything that could save me. Jesus said to her, Did I not say to you that if you believe, you would see the glory of God? Then he took away the stone, then they took away the stone from the place where the dead man was lying. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me and that I know that you always hear me. But because of the people who are standing by, I said this, that they may believe that you have sent me. Now, when he had said these things, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he who died came out of the tomb bound hand and foot with the grave clothes, and his face was wrapped with a cloth, Jesus said, loose him and let him go. That is the passage for you and for me this morning when we understand the resurrection life that Jesus has and the power of his resurrection life over you, that he comes to your life in the midst of your loss where you think you, you are, are so lost. He says, Eric, come out. Come out from that. You don't have to live in that anymore. And I'm just picking him because he's in the front row. I could go down the, the row. I, I could say it to myself, Jeremy, come out. And I, lo I love the, the reality of this because he's in a cemetery. And the reason he said Lazarus, come out, because if... Just so grabs me. The power of our, our risen Lord. Because if he had just said, come out, every one of the graves would have been empty. <laughs> because that is the power of our God that we serve. Amen. So if you think you're at a point where you just don't know how to lay it down, come along, brother or sister in the faith, and lay it down. I, I, that's the simple call to us. Lay down your anger. Lay down your fear. Lay down, lay down your addictions. Lay down whatever it is that you're carrying with us, with, with you. Quit coming on Sunday morning, and, and I'm saying this to myself. We come on Sunday morning and we celebrate, and I think the thing that hinders our worship is the fact that we, we hold too many things of this life with us and the sin that so easily entangles us that we can't step into the worship that God wants us to experience. We can't step into the prayer life God wants us to experience because I'm carrying a backpack full of weight and weight and blankets and a sleeping bag and sleeping bags hanging on it and, and a bunch of weights in my hand and a suitcase. Because in Isaiah 55, 11, it says that his word never returns void, that his, his word that he's planting in you comes back to fruition and he, he manifests it and it grows and there's things that happen in your life. Because when God speaks in your life, he's speaking something and he's speaking life into you. I just got a couple more. The worship team can probably take their place. We're going to sing one last song. First Peter 2. First Peter, not Second Peter. And I'm just touching on so many of these scriptures because the Christian life is not, not lived in a day. This, this book that we have to study is a lifelong study. 
So 1 Peter 2 says, Therefore, laying aside all malice, all deceit, all hypocrisy, all envy, and all evil speaking, as newborn babes, desire the pure milk of the word, that you may grow thereby, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is gracious. And I know a lot of you, and I know you've tasted that the Lord is gracious. So let's lay aside all that other garbage. Let's lay it at the, at the foot of the cross and let's, let's go to him because in John 7 it talks about when we come to him and I'm going to go there and this is, this is the last scripture for today. On that last day, on the great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried out saying, if anyone thirsts, if anyone thirsts, anyone out there thirsts, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me. And I know you believe in Jesus. So, so if you believe in Jesus, this is what he says. This isn't what Pastor Jeremy says. This is what Pastor Jeremy is saying that Jesus, the Savior of the world, says. So if you believe in me and you, you trust in, in my word, you trust in what I've said, and you thirst for me, if you thirst for him like you haven't thirsted for anything else, it says, he who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Our world needs rivers of living water flowing out of each one of your hearts. Amen? And each one of your hearts, and each one of your hearts, and the rivers of living water of our Savior and Lord, Jesus Christ, flow out of the church's heart, this, this world will look different. The world, when the world cries help, the church will go, I know where you need some help. I can bring the living water into you, and if you thirst that the Spirit is bringing something upon your life to bring a realization that you need a Savior, because we can't change anybody, but the Holy Spirit wants to change people. So Easter isn't just a time in the spring that we celebrate one time a year that, that the Lord is risen. We celebrate it every day of our lives that He is risen. He, he is risen, and I, I have living water flowing out of me, and I, I just can't stop. You're just going to get wet when you get close to me. Because the rivers of living water are flowing on Eric and Julie. And you just can't help it. Here's the last picture for you. When Jesus says we're yoked to him, we don't use a yoke a lot. And that's no yoke. <laughs> we don't use a yoke a lot anymore. They used them back then, and when you were yoked to something, they, they did it together, they moved together, and, and the, the more powerful, the more learned beast, so to speak, would, would walk, and the other one would come along with. Because when you're yoked to something, you don't change your mind on which direction you're going. It's because you're yoked to them, and they take you in the direction that they know is the direction to go. And so when we yoke ourselves, and we lay all of our burdens on Jesus Christ, because he says, his yoke is easy and his burden is light. He takes us forward, walking in his yoke, and, and he carries the burden. He says, follow me, I'll take you. I'll, I'll help you get rid of that anxiety. I'll help you do all those things, all the things that you're dealing in life. You just lay them on me, and I'll take you in the right direction. And you'll walk in the resurrection life. And living water will come out of you. So why not today? Why not today? Why can't today be the day where we lay some things down? Why, why can't Resurrection Sunday be the day when we, we celebrate the fact that we have been freed from the burden of sin in this life? Because he paid the ransom and he didn't just pay it. He said, you know that payment? My father's going to put his stamp of approval on that payment. You know why he's going to do that or how he's going to do that? He says, I'm not going to stay in the grave. I'll be there three days and then I'll be alive. Right. And that's what the Father did in, in receiving that, that sacrifice. Amen, church? So we're going to sing a song together. But I, I'm believing that there, there are those in this congregation uh, that are gathering today that need to lay something down. I don't know what it is, but you know what it is. And the Holy Spirit knows what it is. And when the Holy Spirit speaks to you, he speaks to you in the truth of what needs to be laid down. Because I'll tell you what, the Lord cares about you. 
He cared enough to send his son for you. And he wants you to walk in freedom. He wants you to walk in victory. He, d- he doesn't just want you to, to walk carrying the burdens every day. He wants you to walk in the victory that's his. Amen? He, and, and we wave the flag of victory. We just don't wave it on, on Resurrection Sunday morning. We wave it every day of the year. Because you know what? I walk in victory. You know, all this stuff that, that fell down as it, it read in that book, it went down and it's never seen before. I know you can see this yet. If I could have dug a hole and had a pit and we threw it all in there and, and never saw it again... Uh, all these sinkholes that are coming up all over the place in the country. We just throw it in a sinkhole and we never see it. As far as the east is from the west, God removed our transgressions from us. He has risen, church. So if you'll stand with me, we're going to sing a chorus. But in the singing of that chorus, and when we're closed, I'll, I'll close the service. But if you need prayer, today is the day. And if God's working on your heart to be a prayer... I believe that you're supposed to come forward as well to pray for people that need to release something to the, to the one that can deal with it. Because we know the one that can deal with it. Amen? If our Savior can conquer death, I think he can conquer your stuff. Because that, that's what he, he's here. He can conquer that stuff in your life. Hallelujah, what a Savior. Amen? So if you need to come up front, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pray and other people will come to, to pray for you, but we're going to sing this chorus and then I'll release those that need to go. But those of you that need to stay and have some prayer, please, please stay. Don't hold on to it for another day. Why in the world would we carry a burden longer than we need to carry it? Amen? Hallelujah to your name, God. May you be praised in our lives. Lord, we don't want to carry stuff with us anymore. We want to lay it on all on you. 
Lord, at the foot of the cross. And so it rolls down the hill and it goes into the, into the grave. As far as the east is from the west, you remove our transgressions from us and no, we don't carry it anymore. I thank you that you've given us this, this in your word, that, that your yoke is easy and your burden is light and you walk with us in life. God, you, you promised us the Holy Spirit. You wanted to empower us to speak for you, that rivers of living water would flow from us. And I pray that that would be the testimony of this house. That rivers of living water would flow out of this building. That would flow from the hearts of all the people that gather in this building. That, that nobody can enter the doors of this building and, and worship you and read your word and, and pray to you without getting wet, God. That people would come in here and they'd be changed forever because you are about changing forever. You don't want to change us for a day, God. You want to change us forever and ever and ever. And God, it's hard for us to grab a hold of eternity because everything is physical for us. Lord, so we don't see that in the true sense unless by your spirit you show it to us. So God, I pray that you'd show it to us. And God, I pray that you'd bless the people here. Bless them in the rest of this day. Bless them in their family gatherings. Blessing, bless them in the, the gathering of friends, Lord, whoever they're gathering with. Maybe they're just having a quiet Sunday at home to, to ponder the resurrection life. And God, I pray that you would meet them there and that you would bring your transformation life into their, their homes and wherever they're gathering. We would praise you, God. You're so good. That you'd, you would turn, as you, you say in your word, that you'd turn your countenance and turn your face toward us and you'd be gracious to us. Lord, you are gracious to us. Now you turn your face toward us and we, we look into your eyes and I can only imagine at, at, the, at the end of this, as the disciples are seeing this and as, as Mary saw this and went to the tomb and it was empty and she's like, I don't know what's going on and they had seen what had happened to you on the cross and they were going in every which direction and they just didn't know and then, and then you said her name and you said Mary and she looked in your eyes. I can only imagine that in the midst of that and all the chaos that she felt in life that there was a sense of peace that washed over her like, like she didn't even know how to describe the peace that washed over her because she looked into your eyes. And you can do that, God. You can, through your word and through the different parts of our Christian walk, you can look into our eyes and you can bring peace. And not only do we feel that peace, then we walk in that peace. And then the people that, that come and encounter, encounter us, they encounter you and, and that your peace rubs off on them and they, they feel your peace as well. Because God, we live in a, a world that is not filled with peace. So we praise you, God. Bless these people as they leave this place. And bless us as we, we minister to those that want to want to pray and be ministered to, God, in the things that we release to you. We praise you, God. You are so worthy and so holy. In your name we pray, Jesus. Amen. Be blessed, church. If you want to have some prayer, please come forward and, and we'll have some time of prayer.